let's get this show on the road, everybody. Man, today we're going to talk about something that's dope. We're going to talk about something real dope. We're going to talk about five ways to prevent that old, your price is too high complaint and two killer rebuttals. We got to have two killer rebuttals to talk about. We're going to tell you what to do to prevent it. And we're going to give you two ways to rebuttal when people say it's an issue. Stay tuned. Let's get this show on the road. You're listening to Content and Cash, a Flash Film Academy podcast. If you want to learn how to take pretty pictures, this is not the place. But if you're ready to make a living by learning the business behind the camera, buckle up because it's time to turn passion into profit with your host, Ty Turner. Which really good. If this is your first time on this channel right here, you got to know that this channel is dedicated to understanding the business side of content creation. Let's go back to the ACAM. Today, we're going to talk about something that's going to be a little deep, something that a lot of content creators really need to know. First, I'm going to ask that you post where you're from in the comments. Go ahead and post that so I can, so I can see where everybody is chiming in from. Let's do that real quick. But I want to talk about... We all heard it. Your price is too high. That's too much. That's way too much. And we got to talk about what to do in that situation because I think a lot of content creators can help by understanding um, what to do to prevent that. So let's talk about it. Uh, first things first. Number one, and it's something that we talk about a lot over a, over a Flash Home Academy. We talk about itemizing the price we want to itemize the prices on our proposal so that clients understand how we got to that price it's not uh no type of guessing or no type of fairy tale way to get to the number we get to but they understand how to how we got to that price why it's important that this is the price plus it gives clients the ability to remove or move things around based off what they want instead of saying no. And it will help you save 50% of your sales if this is the case. So first thing you want to do is itemize it. We talk about that a lot in module one um, of the master course. In fact, we talk about how to price your items, how to itemize it, what should be up sales and add-ons. We'll go into that later um, because that's where we talk about that a lot. What's going on? We got, okay. That's what's up. That's we got some people straight. We got Miami. We got NYC. We got Canada. I was just in Canada. I was just in Toronto. Much love to you. Um, let's talk about number two. Right. We need to understand what the value is to the client. Right. Down down to the penny. Asking the right questions to determine the cost of not doing business. And I think a lot of people don't realize that you know, there are there are cons to not getting content. We need to discover what those cons are. And if you don't know them, you can't use them in your favor when it's time to sell. What does it cost you not to act now, not to have this content, not to have this training video, not to have this video on your website? I think it's important that we let clients know what they are missing. And if we don't understand what they are missing, how can they understand what they are missing? A lot of people People only talk about what they are offering and the cost, but you don't know how to talk about what it's costing them not to take action, right? And, and a lot of great sales techniques teach you how to focus on, hey, th it can cost you this amount for us to get started, or this is what it's going to cost you for us not to get started. And that comes, there's a lot of ways to get to that number. And a lot of it we talk about in the course or over in the member side, of course, but there are, there are a few ways you can get to that number, but it's important that you understand what they're not getting by not taking action with you and now, right? We got to add some FOMO. We got to add some urgency to that purchase because it has to happen now 
This is what happens if you don't do it now. And, and look, these are legitimate, real numbers. And you would be surprised at how many content creators I've worked with who are in the business of content creation um, that, that's designed to get results. And they don't know the cost of not getting those results. You need to know what it costs not to get those results. If you don't have car insurance and you get in a car accident, well, what does it cost not to pay the two, three hundred dollars a month you need to pay for car insurance? It may cost you tens of thousands of dollars not to be covered. You need to you need to put that in front of your client because sometimes it helps to make a decision when price is a problem. I guarantee you what I'm providing costs less than it would cost not to have this. And a lot of content creators never think about that because they're selling quality and passion. Quality and passion is not valuable or as valuable to a client as you will think. And we'll talk about that. Um, we'll talk about that a little later. Um, number number two is uh, you want number three is you want to. You want to kind of double down on the on your effectiveness to solve problems for the client, right? Um, you know, more than just image quality, more than just your passion of the craft. You want, this is why we teach niche. This is why niche is so important because it shows proof as to your ability to solve a problem. I'm not telling you to, to choose a niche so you can only shoot one thing. I'm telling you to choose a niche so that you are very appealing to one type of client and we can circle these clients and we know how to go after these clients. It's very difficult to do if you are trying to be everywhere and do it for everybody it's very difficult to do if you don't know who you're in front of the number one tool in all of war is information i know they have a a shield and a sword now i can prepare to go to battle against somebody with a shield and a sword i know they're coming from the east i know they plan to flank us i know they're going to send decoys i can prepare for that the same is true with sales and how you approach your client if you understand who's in front of you it, the game slows down and it get a whole lot easier a lot of people are afraid of being niche and you're losing out on consistent it ain't about how much you sell at first it's about your ability to consistently land clients and close those clients you feel me it's about your you have to consistently land clients to do this full-time or even part-time that's the thing we got to focus on to get you to be consistent in landing sales we have to identify who we're going after and an analogy i love to use that that makes it click is regular people versus pro fishermen regular people get a, a fishing rod with any type of hook and any type of bait in any type of lake at any type time of day in hopes that they catch something pro fishermen know what type of rod what type of uh line they want to use what type of hook they want to use because they know what type of fish they want to catch and by knowing the type of fish they want to catch it, it allows them to make every decision about that day and what they do to be successful at catching those fish they know what time what lake what area to, to fish in they know how deep the water the water temperature they know what bait that type of fish is eating at this time of year or this time of day they know what what size hook is best for that type of fish they know when to yank and when not to yank they know when to bob and when not to bob and because of that you can watch a fisherman on tv pull out fish every three minutes just to wave it in front of you and throw it back in the water and here we can go sit there and fish all day and not catch nothing and, and a lot of times People don't even know what they're trying to catch. They don't even know what type of fish is in the lake. They just dare to fish. And that's great for a hobby. It's not great for business. So if we decide we want to do this as a business, we have to take it serious. And you can't take it serious if you don't know who you're after. You don't know who you're after. You got to know that. So it's very important that you know who you're after. Um, up next, I want to talk about client testimonials, right? Client testimonials are super important 
because you have to have a I my client testimonials speak to my to the objections that my clients may have to prevent them from being objections. I got a testimonial that talks about, hey, he's not cheap, but he's good. If you want somebody cheap, that's not the place. But if you want it done right, this is this is what you have to do. In fact, I brought that testimonial with me so you can take a look at it. Check it out. My name is Brett Costa. I am the owner of Complete Trailers. Up to a point, uh, fairly recently, I was doing all of the marketing, all of the editing, photos, the video, everything on my own. And my business grew to a point where I just couldn't do it all anymore. And I really wanted to take it to the next level. I decided to seek out a videographer company. Every marketing dollar that we spend is really critical that we spend that in the correct way. And I think I, think I can, say to these guys to tie and flash film that i shopped the heck out of them you know they were like the fifth guy that i talked to flash film wasn't the cheapest out there but the value in terms of the entire package the customer service and everything that i was receiving so if your business is in need of social media or youtube help and you want to take your videos to the next level and take your production to the next level i highly recommend flash film media you won't be disappointed so that's just an example. And let's switch to this camera. That's an example of why you really need to have testimonials to overcome the objections before they become objections. Very important. This camera don't want to focus worth nothing. Let's go back to the ACAN. So th these are, th that's, you, you have to make sure that you are prepared for that. If you're not the chief guy, you're the best at what you do. You solve a problem. You need to be prepared to present yourself that way. All right. Now, last but not least, number five is very important. Very important is something that I punch you in the throat about all day, every day. It's beta clients. You need to work with a beta client to understand what value is to them and to know what the industry's budget is. Right. Every company in the industry have a certain amount of range that they're willing to spend on X, Y, Z type of job. You need to understand that before you walk into the business. Don't go in there asking them what their budget are. We can we can pull up stats and see what every marketing company spent on ads this year, what, every pl what the average plumbing company are spending on training content or whatever. You Those stats are available. And if they're not, we teach you how to go and get that information because that's information you need to be successful. We need to understand what plumbers in my area plan on spending for marketing this year so that I can create products within that range. You can't go and, and, and outperform the market. You got to understand what the market is doing and you have to understand, you know, the why the price is set that way. Before I get to the rebuttals, because I'm going to definitely get to the rebuttals, I'm going to ask that you post your questions below. Go ahead and post your questions below. I'm also going to mention that we got um, the capture and convert kit. Let me see where my button at for that. We got the capture and convert kit where it's two easy payments of free 99. You can go to Flash Home Academy. You can go ahead and grab that thing. It's free. Sign up. Get it. It's free. I don't know where my button at. Anyway, it don't matter. Um, so go check that out. Let, let's talk about let's talk about the two rebuttals, right? Let's talk about the two rebuttals. I think talking about the rebuttals are very important, and there's a reason why. Let me let me kind of I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you what the industry what the industry say do, and I'm gonna give you the the Flash Film Academy way. This is this is what makes Flash Film Academy a little different compared to what the industry say, right? After doing some research, let me kind of um, let me read what the industry say do, right? The industry say when you get your prices too high, the rebuttal that the industry that your gurus is telling you is, I appreciate your concern about the costs. My pricing includes not just not just the time spent on the photo shoot, but also the detailed planning, use of proper equi professional equipment and extensive post-production editing. This comprehensive service guarantees high quality images that stand out. That's BS. Don't do that. This is not 1988. Don't do that. Nobody cares about how long you've been in business. 
Nobody cares about your image quality. They care about your ability to solve their problem as a business owner. That's something your brand should have been displaying from day one. Your brand should be all about. This is why we itemize. We have itemized billing to show the client what costs what. It helped the client understand the price of each item and why they need it. And that way, it also allowed them to mix and match items to get the price they want. You would be surprised at how many clients go up on the price when they know other services are available. You don't want to focus on image quality and how long you've been doing it. What you want to do is you want to get the proposal in front of them and go over what you can remove to get it within the price you want. Also, um, let me let me go to the next one that I'll tell you because it kind of favors together. The next the next rebuttal that you've probably heard is I understand that my rates may seem high at first glance. But investing in professional photography or videography means you're getting lasting memories that will be cherished for generations. High quality photos or video have timeless value. And my goal is to provide you with images that truly capture the essence of your special moment. Don't do this. This worked in 1988. Um, you're, you're not you're not speaking to your ability to solve the problem. Um, focus on what happens if we don't address the problem and what is it costing you? We want to focus on what we offer. Also, let me tell you this. If for whatever reason. Once you've itemized your bill and you need to be flexible with your your itemized list or what's on your bill, it shows as value because you can mark a dollar amount off and that client can look at it and say, I was just about to spend eight hundred dollars for this. You're giving it to me for free. I feel like I'm getting value instead of throwing in something they didn't want, throwing in something they had no price point or idea of the value and throwing in something that is free to them, but they don't understand what the, the true value is. They feel like you're marking it up to make them feel special. If you're going to remove something or give something for free, I always place it on my proposal with the dollar amount and I draw a line through it. That is what I do to ensure that clients understand that we're really taking this off for you or we're really doing this for you. When it comes to price, you have to understand your client. Uh, this one size fit all mentality of going after everybody do not work. And you want to make sure that you're presenting these items in a way where it, it holds value with your client. And a lot of clients care about their business. So let's talk about your business. Let's talk about ways that adding or removing this from your proposal can affect your business. And what's, what's the cost of not doing business? We never talk. What's the cost of not doing business? So that's something that you have to understand based off your ability to solve problems. And if you're not in this industry to solve problems, you're not going to make it. Sorry, not sorry. Go ahead and put your stuff on Facebook Marketplace because you're not going to make it, bro. AI is taking your job first. So you got to do that. Um, if you got questions, if you're on TikTok, Instagram, go ahead, post them. Uh, I got one question that popped up. Sam say when they choose what they want, do you pay a do they pay a deposit on the total of what they want? I'm glad you asked that question, bro. We don't do deposits. We do non-refundable retainers. Deposits don't hold up in court. We no longer do deposits in 2024. You should be doing non-refundable retainers. We got a contract for that in the contract pack. Why why do a non-refundable retainer tie? Because if something happened, if we have um, another outbreak, if anything happened, if that client decided they want to pull out the day before the event, you have to refund that money. A non-refundable retainer means you've retained that date. I can't book nothing else on that date and I'm holding half of your money because I can't make money on that day because I'm taking that day off my calendar to make money. And if you don't show up, that money is still mine. You need, a, you need to be working with non-refundable retainers. We no longer do we no longer do deposits. 
And and th- some businesses, I, I do a 50% non-refundable retainer. That's me. That's how I do it. Depending on what niche you're in, you may not. If you work with government, you got to do a net 30. I got a client right now that's net 60 I'm waiting on. So it just depends on the type of client you work with. But the tradition is, um, the tradition is always, you know, 50% retainer. Um, London world says, should I use credit cards or my debit card? What do you mean as far as, as far as accepting payment? Or do you mean, cause I, I accept both credit and debit. Most companies are usually credit though. I'm working B2B. There's very little company debit cards that I work with. Um, when I work with clients. So I'm usually, I'm usually, I'm usually taking credit card, but you always want to use, you always, plus in your retainer, you always, and this is things we go over in the course. You kind of want to set aside funds for the project as well as labor cost, right? I like to get my guys paid. I like for them to be paid before the rest of the money is paid. I like to pay people quick. If you're working with me, I want to cut a check that Friday or direct deposit that Friday. That's just me. Some people like to, some people don't. When you work with me, I like to make sure that you, you're paid. If you guys got questions, go ahead and post them before we slide out. So again, let me let me kind of do a recap. Let me let me do a quick recap on things you should do, things you should be doing to prevent this question. While while a few more questions come in. One, you want to itemize the cost per service. When you give people this this proposal, don't give them video package in one price. Don't do that. Walmart don't do that. Target don't do it. Best Buy don't do it. No place you go to right now when you throw a bunch of junk in the cart, they give you one price for it. You got a receipt with everything on it. Do the same for your clients. Don't cut corners. Don't be half-assed. Number two is you need to understand what the value is to the client, not to to you it I, you know what i hate i hate when content creators talk about how many years they've been doing it or how much they spent on gear that's incorrect nobody cares stop creating your price based off what you spent to get in the game nobody cares that is a 1999 business model that the gurus you follow who don't do this every day for a living is regurgitating and telling you Nobody care what you spent on gear. Just like you don't care what the cost of the ice cream machine is at McDonald's, even though it keeps breaking. You don't care what the cost of the skillet is. You don't care about the 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 oven at Domino's. You don't care about the car they delivered it in. Nobody care about your gear but you. Stop thinking it is something that, that adds value to your brand. It does not. The only people who care about gear, and this is, let me make sure I slice this because a lot of these guys bleed over into this, are those who are freelancers being hired by directors or, or DPs. Yeah, that director care about what gear you got because the only problem you're solving for him is filming. The company that hired him usually don't care. He's getting a big check. You're getting a small check. Not talking to freelancers, not talking to people who are being hired to just be camera guys. I'm talking about business owners who are cashing a big check, working with B2B clients. Nobody cares about your gear. Only you. So don't go in there thinking I got this and I spent that and I got all this cost money and I've been doing this for years. That's why it costs so much. If you can't show why you're valuable without talking about gear, you're not going to make it. It's, it's, it you're not going to make it. It's the equivalent of, of talking about why you should be in a relationship with somebody and your only selling feature is sex. Everybody got that. Everybody who here got that. What's, what's different about you? So you have to be a problem solver in 2024 to make money in this industry. You have to be a problem solver. If you're not solving problems, you're not going to make it. Um, Number three is. um, Let me let me double down on that. You want to make sure you're solving problems over image quality. You want to solve problems over image quality. Um. You always want to do that. Number four is you want to create testimonials or make sure your website is designed to overcome objections. I just showed you a testimonial where I literally was like, hey, let's talk about price. I coached him into that. He would, he didn't naturally do it. I coach my testimonials 
into what I want from my clients. Tell me about, you know, where you shopped around. Tell me about how you felt when you got the price. If you're just cutting on testimonials and you're letting people say, he's cheap, I got a good, that's why you're attracting cheap clients. You are marketing yourself as the cheap guy, as the value guy. You're marketing yourself as Walmart. My, my testimonials don't say he's cheap. My testimonials say he's worth it. He solves problems. That, test, that client told you about the problems they had in that, with their business and how we solved it, how they shopped around, how they didn't get the cheapest price from us, but we were worth it. That's the testimonials you need to provide to your client for them to do business with you. Where you are thinking about money, they are not. They have a budget for it. You just got to give them a valid reason to spend that budget. And a lot of you guys can't outside of passion. I love to do this. I've been doing this since I was three. Uh, gear. I got the latest and greatest. 8K, 4K, 6K. I'm going to put this 8K video on your website to slow your website down, to tank your SEO, to stop people from coming to your website and spending money with you. Because I think that 8K is the best way to go. Because I think image quality is everything. Even though every monitor in your building ain't even over 1440, I'm going to bog down your website with a big 8K file. As if somebody's going to be on their phone with an 8K screen, cranking up the quality on your website to watch your brand video and wait 20 minutes for it to load. It's not happening. Your client don't care about your gear. Um, you got to make sure you got to make sure you understand the industry you're going after and what they value. A sports photographer value different lens than a nature photographer, than a wedding photographer, than a, than a product photographer. Everybody in this game who got that's why they make so many different cameras because they're big on features certain people value. It's three versions, there's three versions of the A7S. Why? Because there's three major groups of people that it go after. And that's just the budget version of the A9 or the, a the A1. Like, there's still levels to it. There's a reason why car companies make so many different cars and so many different colors and so many with so many different features because there's so many different client types that they want to go after at once. And if you don't understand who you're going after, you won't have success. You are just a guy sitting on the dock with a, with a stick and a string hoping to catch something. You may catch something big once, but you will not be consistent at it. So you want to make sure you do that. Work with, Beta clients will help you understand it. Um, let me see. Sam said, I'm using a structure-based pricing format for the shoot where I'm profitable for the first hour. Do they pay on... Do they pay on the non-refundable retainer include not? Yes, the non-refundable retainer is half of everything they have selected. The only way the second half of the, of the money that's due go up is if they add on after the shoot date. They may say, hey, we want to get an additional edit. Hey, you know what? We wasn't thinking about it at the time, but the shoot came out so good. We want the raw footage. Cool, we charge extra for the raw footage. So there, there are things that you, yes, I don't, this, this camera acting janky, so we're going back to this one. So yes, there, you, you got to know, you got to know that they're going to pay 50% of everything up front. Absolutely. It's not up for debate. It's it, it, absolutely. Um, just want to see what, what other questions we got coming in from, from the gram or from TikTok before we slide out. Make sure we got everything. Make sure we got everybody. If you got questions, go ahead and post them. So you want to make sure that you as a content creator, as a business owner, you know who's in front of you. I cannot stress that enough. The, the reason a lot of you guys aren't successful is because you don't know who will use what you have to offer. You're hoping somebody will. You're wishing somebody will, but you don't know the person that's sitting across from you. And you have to identify who that is and build a brand around proving to them that you can solve the problems you solve. And if you're not doing that, your level of success will dwindle. If you are doing that, you will be more successful. All right. Everybody got it? Everybody picking up what I'm putting down? You got you got 30 seconds to get your last questions in here. Hit that like button wherever you at. Hit the heart. Hit the like button. Wherever you are, whoever's watching, you got 30 seconds to pop another question up 
before we slide out. But I want to make sure you guys understand why it's valuable and why you should be building your brand to go after your target client, because it it will eliminate a lot of the problems that the average photographer run into cost too much your price is too high i don't know you know that price is way up there it's not way up there if i understand that everybody in this industry budget for for training videos is x amount in this area because i've done the research i know you got it if if you don't agree to it i haven't done a good job presenting the value of what I offer. It's not them. It's me. Plus, me, that's the only thing you can control. So focus on that. Um, behind the lens, say that army, the army photography guy is back and he's punching people in the throat. I never left, bro. I've been here the whole time. YouTube, YouTube been keeping me on lock. I've been here all day, every day. I'm around for sure. Um, so you want to make sure that you, to grow your business, we got to be intentional. We got to be direct. We have to be efficient. We have to put in some effort. We can't just buy the gear, wave it at people and people throw money at us. It don't work like that no more. We don't live in that time. And a camera is something everybody have. It's not the easy profession anymore. It's the profession that takes some time. It takes building up this because you're selling ice in Alaska right now. Everybody got a camera in their pocket. Everybody have a camera in their pocket. This ain't the 80s. People aren't going to portrait studios, taking family portraits anymore. They are, they are, you know, they want specialists. And if you're not a specialist, you're not going to make it. Um, Endless Cinema says, is it beneficial to get my website made so I can start making money even though I have one beta client and we only did one video so far? Absolutely. Let me talk about this. Because here in module one, when it comes to making that website, who are you going to bounce those ideas off of? Who can tell you if your website's dope or not? Who can tell you if your website's efficient, if it work, if it appeals to them? You need the website to take to the beta clients. We talk about that a lot in module one. Your website don't need to be cool for you. It need to be cool for them. They spending the money, not you. They're spending the money. Not you. So to determine whether or not it's right. And I, I use this analogy. Um, I used this analogy last week or not analogy. I talked about the situation last week where when I was working with dentists, my beta client said, I can't read your website. Your font's too little. Changing my website font increased my sales. You know, it never dawned on me that a majority of dentists are over 40. People over 40 vision start to go. I got guys looking at my website like this. I'm done. I'm off. I'm, it turns them off. They can't read it. Going with a bigger font made me get more sales. I would have never known that had I not had an old guy who was a dentist say, hey, son, listen, I love what you do. I can't read your damn website. Huh? I thought it was just his computer. I'm showing him how to increase the font on his computer. He pulled it up on his computer and his phone. I can't read it. It's too small. Even when my glass is on, he's doing this. He's looking at it like that. You got to understand who your audience is. And if you don't understand who your audience is, you won't be successful. Um, great questions popping up. What are some not so common mistakes um, creators when, when creators are branding or building a brand? Um, not getting information from the right people. It kind of doubles down on what I was saying. Earlier. They're not getting, they're, they're basing their website on what they like. Got nothing to do with what you like. You're not buying from you. I don't care what your friends, your family, your mama and them think. They're not buying from you. They've never been in a position to buy what you sell. If, if you're a wedding photographer, you need to get in front of 10 newly engaged brides to see what they're looking for. What's important to them? What questions do they have? They'll tell you if your website's dope or not. If we don't get in front of the people who buy what we sell and we'll never have correct information. And we live in a world of, of there's, you know, where there's too much information. We live in a world where there's so much information out here. You don't know what to trust. What we train is where to get the information you can trust, period, where to look for the right stuff. Because you listen to a bunch of gurus, they'll have you everywhere. That's why we don't, we don't tell you what to think. We, tell, we teach you how to think. 
I'm not here to tell you what to think. I'm just here to tell you, you need to think more about what you're trying to do. And then we show you how to think about it. We show you where to research it to find the answer that's right for you. You know how many people on YouTube and Instagram just go to my website and try to copy what I do? You know how many demo reels I've run across that sound just like mine? It's not going to work for you. You're not me. You didn't design it to your strengths. You didn't design it to what you offer in your client. You just thought, hey, I'm going to cut corners. I'm just going to copy his. It ain't nothing they can teach me. I'm just going to copy what he do. And now you're looking like a fool. Because your demo reel and your website, which you tried to model after mine, is not working for you. Our niche ain't the same. Our location ain't the same. Our experience ain't the same. Our background ain't the same. Our verbiage ain't the same. Our client ain't the same. So now you're turning your clients off and don't know why. You know what I mean? People say, you a fraud. I copied your website and it didn't work for me. It's not supposed to work for you. You, not me. Your strengths aren't my strengths. Your brand is not my brand. Pepsi can't copy what Coca-Cola do. Pepsi's not Coca-Cola. Even though they're selling a similar product, it's not Coca-Cola. Pepsi has to, they have to build their own identity and understand their market. And if you're too lazy to do it, then you're too lazy to be successful. Sorry, not sorry. As I always said, you are exactly where you're supposed to be. And it's just, a, it's just a harsh reality. Um, let me see. I got a few other ones pop up. Sam T said, I know it's important to be where my target audience is, but I'm having a hard time getting their attention. So I reached out to old B2, so I reached out using old B2B tactics and got an appointment. Should I reach more? Um, if you got a beta client, your beta client should tell you what other beta clients are, what other clients like them are. If, if you're having a hard time reaching your target audience, then you, you haven't had a beta client. Let me give you an example, right? Let me give you an example. I'm a hooper. I like to hoop. If somebody say, hey, where's some hoop spots at? I can give you 20. If somebody say, I'm a, I'm a photographer, I'm a videographer. If somebody say, hey, where's the, where's the video stores at in Dallas? I can give you three or four from Dallas to Fort Worth. People who do certain things know about certain areas. They hang out together. Your beta client, whatever business they own, they can tell you where other business owners like them are, where they hang, what they look at, what's important to them, how to get in front of them. If you have a beta client and don't have that information, then we are asking the right questions. We, we got to definitely refer to module one. Module one teaches you how to ask the right questions so that you'll get a gold mine of information as to where these clients are. It's different based off your niche and what problems you solve. That's, that's the purpose of a beta client and a lot of other things that I'm not talking about on the YouTube side, but you can definitely check it out. Um, another question popped up. How do you how do you handle the conversation when clients want the raw footage from pricing to maybe your reason why you don't offer it? So raw footage for me is always an upsell. Every client don't need raw footage. Some of them just want some of them just want the, the, the completed project. Um, I leave it as a upsell. And my little caveat to it is, hey, in the future, we can re-edit some of this to create more content out of it. And I also always capture more content than I need. So some ideas that I usually have for raw footage is background video for their website, social media content. Those are those are two things that that I really push when it comes to raw footage and just for them to keep it in case they need us to re-edit or add or change things in the future. I can't tell you how many training videos we've shot where CEOs or CFOs have been the voiceover for the project and they're no longer with the company. They're in the project. They're no longer with the company. Guess what? We need to come re-record that voiceover and that last little talking head shot where they're introducing a brand. We need to come change that. I've had that happen um, with restaurants, big chain restaurants, who had bartenders that were showing how to make drinks. That bartender's no longer here. They're no longer the head of food and beverage. We want to get the new guy in there. We don't want to have to reshoot everything. So that's usually how I, how, how I position it. Um, behind the lens says, Ty, when your company has the ability to do many film functions for clients, how do you sift through all the, the all 
to establish your niche. Thanks for always adding value, sir. Okay, this is what I want you to do. Don't think about what you can do. Don't matter. I can change oil. I've changed the transmission. It don't matter. I'm not going to do it. You need to think about what you're knowledgeable on, what you can talk about. That's more important than what you can do. Because once you get your foot in the door and they gain trust, and it's something we go over big time in module one, I'm gonna keep punching y'all in the throat because y'all like, well, what's on module one talks about why it's important to choose a niche based off this and not everything you can do. The biggest mistake content creators, photographers, videographers, filmmakers, video business owners make is thinking that because they can shoot it, they can sell it. Doesn't matter if you can shoot it. If you can't show value with it, you can't sell it. I'm sure I can groom a dog. Am I good at it? Can I talk about it? Probably not. I got some clippers. I got trimmers. I'm sure I can groom a dog. But do I live in that space where I can talk about the value of choosing me over a dog groomer? Absolutely not. Because that's not the space I live in. Can I do it? Absolutely. How can you, you got to show value just because, just because you can do it. Don't mean you're valuable. Doesn't mean you're valuable, but how can we prove, how can we beat out the competition when it comes to doing a specific job type is by being knowledgeable about the industry and understanding my ability to solve their problem better than my competitor. Period. If you can't talk about it, you can't sell it. So it ain't about what you can do. It ain't about a lot of people go buy gear for stuff. What if the customer, the client may want gimbal? You buy all this gear you don't need for a client you don't got. And you're sitting here collecting, it's sitting here collecting dust. That's money that could have been put into the brand, could have been put into marketing, could have been put into growing this. But we decided we wanted to buy gear because we saw a YouTube video of how dope it is to have a wireless follow focus that you can control your camera from 30 feet. But I don't have a job that require me to control my camera, my camera's focus wirelessly from 30 feet. I bought it because I liked it. How is that helping the business? How much money has that made you this year? We got to make better decisions. And making better decisions, see, a lot of people don't make good decisions about their business, their brand, their purchases, because they don't have a goal. They don't have a target audience. They don't have a business that's designed to do something. So they're buying everything, wasting money and time in places that will not help them grow. And at the end of the day, they sit back with a bunch of junk and they wonder why they have not been successful. Because they don't know who they're going after. Remember I told you the pro fisherman who understands he want to go after largemouth bass? Now he can buy a boat that's perfect for going after largemouth bass. Now he can plan his schedule based off the season, the best season to fish. Now he know what time to go to what lake. He know where to go on the lake. Every decision he make is intentional and is designed to get him one step further. A lot of content creators who don't know where they're going is taking 20 steps in 20 different directions and you're still in the place you were when you got started. I'm going to put this up here again. Because that's what that's for. That's so you're not walking in circles. I can lead you to the water. I can't make you drink. So... You can continue doing business as usual. Cool with it. Our Flash from Academy members are closing every day. Keep doing what you're doing. One day you may figure it out. More than likely you won't. Because the industry has changed from 2019 to now. What worked in 2019 don't work in 2024. Hell, what worked in 2021 is starting not to work in 2024. So when you're ready, you, you, you come over and see us. You, you go ahead and you go to your app store and get with us. All right. Any last questions before we slide out? Any last quick questions um, before we slide out? Niche is everything. Niche is if you have a niche 
and you your brand is built around that niche, you don't have to be a good salesman. Valvoline don't have to sell you on why you should come there to get your oil changed, do they? Because that is what they specialize in. You go there for the purpose of a oil change. Why else would you go to Valvoline? You go there for that purpose. And then they upsell you on air filters and antifreeze and everything, brakes, checking your, they do, they upsell you on other items, but their focus is oil changes. They know that that brings you in the door and everybody with a car needs one. In fact, you need one multiple times per year. So they know they're going to see you multiple times per year. They create a client for life by having great customer service, getting you in and out. And they know you'll be there three, four times a year, depending on how much you drive. But those companies specialize in something for a reason. They overcome any objections you have about, can y'all change my oil? Do y'all know the right course, court, the right amount of quartz? Are we doing synthetic? Are we doing regular? Are we blending? They do all of these. So um, you, you have to be intentional about your business. If you willy nilly out here hoping, hope is not a plan. And plan is not strategy. Let me say that again. Hope is not a plan. And a plan is not strategy. One day you'll get it. It may not be now, but one day you're going to sit there looking at your camera that you spent all this money for. cost you about two, three checks to get all these lenses you've seen, all these reviews on. You went out and got all these nice cases and all this really high end gear you went out and got that is not making you money. That's sitting in your house looking back at you. Y'all both hungry and broke. But when you're ready, we got a place for you. Anyway, I'm going to ask you to do what I always ask you to do. Be inspired. Be creative. But your damn show better be profitable. Every business, every business around you need content. Every single day. The question you got to ask yourself, the question I want you to ask yourself today is why aren't they hiring you? And when you're ready to answer that question, you come see us over at Flash Home Academy. Until next time, see y'all in the future. You've been listening to Content and Cash, a Flash Film Academy podcast. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and go to our webpage at www.flashfilmacademy.com.